I, I wanted to show you guys how easy it is to start a travel vlog um, because when I first started one you know I didn't really know what I was doing and I felt very overwhelmed there were loads of questions I had and I just did I just couldn't find the answers anywhere so I thought I'd film this video at the very start of my travel vlog I guess you could say career right the very uh, you know I've just started doing travel vlogging I've not I've only really been vlogging for about a month or two maybe less so, and I've only really been on a few trips where I've actually filmed what I'm doing. So I guess you could say I'm a very new travel vlogger. But that being said, I still have found out and learned a few things just by research and experience that I thought I'd share with you guys because I'm sure there are lots of people out there who would like to start a travel vlog, but maybe they just don't know how or what to do first. So let me just start this by saying, you don't need to be a permanent full-time traveler or nomad to start a travel vlog. You can quite easily start a travel vlog and upload whenever you happen to travel. It sounds pretty simple, but there are loads of people who don't want to start because they're worried that if they don't travel all the time and make a video every day, then they'll fail. It's just simply not true. You can, you can film a video whenever you feel like it, you can upload it whenever you want. Now, to grow a YouTube channel, the best time to upload is at least every day. That being said, you can still find things to make videos about when you're not traveling. Like for example, this video now, I'm currently not traveling, right? But this is still a travel vlog and this is still a video that I'm posting as one of my daily videos. So you can always find things to, to post, even if you're not traveling all the time, whether that's like a montage of a previous trip or maybe you're talking about an upcoming trip. Maybe you're talking about how you go about planning your travels, what you want to do. Or even if you're just telling a story about a previous holiday or, or trip that you've been on, there is always something to talk about and something to post. So don't worry if you don't have the time or money to travel all the time. And that's also something I'm going to get onto in a minute as well, because one very common myth is that you need lots of money to travel, which is not the case. It's not true. So yeah, you don't need to be traveling all the time to start a travel vlog. Now, I'm going to talk about equipment now. I realise there's no actual structure to the order of things I'm saying here, but let's just let's just go with it. I'm talking now about equipment that you need to start a travel vlog. I, when I first started, had literally nothing. I had a very basic laptop. It was a Windows laptop. It was very slow. This was a few years ago, though. This was with my other channels. And over the years, I just sort of added to my, I guess you could say, my setup. So I got a MacBook um, to film videos on and I used the, the webcam in the laptop for a, a long time. It was terrible, the videos were really bad quality, but I just posted them, I got my name out there and I just started learning how to edit videos. And then recently I got a new camera, which is this one. This is the Sony DC, DSC WX500, I always get the name wrong. And so I'm using that for most of my videos simply because the audio is quite good compared to the iPhone. But then if I'm in a rush or you know if I don't have this camera with me I'll just use an iPhone and you know you can you can use pretty much any iPhone anything above the iPhone 4 I would say is is good you know a lot of the newer ones have 4k video they have very good cameras they have okay audio it's not the best but it's you can hear what people are saying but my point is you don't need a huge really expensive rig to start vlogging you used to and it used to be the case that you'd have to take like a giant setup with you with a massive microphone and handles and everything. But today you can just use your phone. You can use your phone or you can use a very cheap uh, point and shoot camera like this Sony. You can even find cheaper ones for less than $100, uh, $100. Pounds. What really, what really stops people vlogging is just they don't know how to start or they don't know what to vlog about. And that's another thing I want to address. So, the way I like to do it, the way I like to personally run my travel vlog is I will do things and go on trips that really excite me and that I really want to go on, okay? And then during those trips I like to, I'm quite meticulous with my, my time and so I like to plan things for pretty much every, every day of a trip, you know, whether that's waking up early to go and film a time lapse or go on a hike or something or just making sure that I pack in as many trips and, and events and excursions and you know hikes and things into a day because I don't like to feel like I'm wasting my time. I like to feel like when I'm in a place, when I've traveled somewhere, I'm gonna make the most of it. So what I'll do is I'll just do things I enjoy doing 
right, as many things as I can, and I'll just bring a camera. And I won't film all of it because that would take away from the actual experience I'm having. But it, once you get used to the idea that if you just bring a camera with you, don't worry about making the perfect shot. Okay, don't worry about making sure it looks perfect and you know completely framed and, and designed properly. Just have the camera with you. Okay, if you're doing something cool or if you see something interesting, just whip out the camera, press record, and then forget you're holding the camera. This is the biggest tip I can give you because for a long time, you know, I was I was worried about composing the perfect shot and making sure that I looked through the camera viewfinder and I was always but you don't need to do any of that because that takes away from what you should be experiencing by traveling in the first place, which is actually your experiences with your own eyes. So bring a camera with you, start it filming, and then just hold it and just forget about it. And in that moment, just actually experience the situation yourself and forget you're holding a camera. The camera's gonna film and some shots will be good, some will be bad, doesn't matter. What's important is that you're just doing things you enjoy doing, okay? and a lot of the time you will have footage of those of those things and the best part about it is that when you edit the footage later if there's something you don't like or if there's something that you maybe you didn't get the shot properly because you were too let's say if you're trying to get a really good shot of a waterfall and you're looking up in awe at this waterfall and you've got the camera you've started the camera filming but because it's so amazing and so overwhelming you're sort of looking up like this and without realizing it you move the camera up and it misses the whole shot. The camera doesn't film the waterfall properly or it's you know filming the floor or the side or something. It's irrelevant. It doesn't matter because you're going to have loads of time to go on other trips and see other things. You could even go back to that waterfall if you really want to do. But you can always find something else. You can always you could even upload the footage if it's not very good and put a title over it saying this is like off to the side because I was so distracted by the waterfall. And people would like appreciate that because it's honest, it's, it's genuine. And a lot of my a lot of my travel vlogs are like that. You know, I'll have some shots that I've, that I've uh, captured perfectly, and then other shots might be a bit shaky or they might be a bit off center. And I'm fine with that because, you know, the people watching my travel vlog know that it's genuinely me and this is what I'm experiencing. It's almost like you are there with me. Um, whereas a lot of travel vlogs, and I'm not saying these are better or worse, but a lot of travel vlogs. The focus is always on, on production of the, the piece, the art piece, right, which is the video. Which is, I respect that and it's, it's very good, but me personally, I like to travel genuinely. I like, I like to genuinely enjoy and experience the places I go to. And if I can bring a camera and get some good footage as well, that's a bonus for me, but the priority is not making a video or the vlog. The priority for me is actually experiencing the thing, okay? Getting the experience, the memories, looking at whatever it is, the waterfall, the mountainscape, the, the sunrise, whatever I'm doing, okay? And that's fine, because you can always, you know, worst case scenario, you, you won't have a very good video at the end of that day, but you can always learn and improve. So like now, for example, when I go somewhere and I'm, I'm, I have my camera, oftentimes, without even thinking, I'll turn it on and start filming, and you know, I'm holding the camera with one hand and sort of without even thinking about it, I'm keeping it in, in focus to whatever I'm looking at so that I'm free to enjoy the actual moment. And I think a lot of travel vloggers tend to forget this and they tend to just look directly at their phone screens and they're in these amazing places and seeing these incredible things, but they're seeing it through their phone screen even though they're right there in the action. I don't like that. I like to be more genuine. I like to actually enjoy and experience the things. So summary of that section is Bring a camera everywhere you go, whether it's your phone or an actual camera for vlogging. Turn it on as often as you can and just film what you're doing. But don't focus on that. Focus on what you're actually doing. And then if you happen to get good footage of it, that's a bonus. Okay, so the next thing is how to actually afford to travel. Now, like I said at the very start, you don't need to travel all the time. You could go on two, three trips a year and still have a travel vlog. You know, especially if you pack a lot into those two or three trips you'll have footage to like spread out throughout the year maybe you could like schedule videos or post things after you've already got back from the trip there's nothing wrong with that you want to edit up clips after you've got back from a trip and then sort of slowly post them as different episodes I guess of your travel vlog that's fine um, I, I prefer to actually film you know film on the day and then post that the next day 
but obviously depending on where you are you might not have Wi-Fi you might not have good signal on your phone or you might not be able to charge your devices whatever the case is I don't know so either one is fine but you don't need a lot of money to actually to, to, to travel you know especially with things like Airbnb with things like like these flight comparison search engines where you can search like dozens of airlines and different times you can always pick the cheapest flight it might not be the most direct but you can always save money and you can always compare prices instead of just thinking I have to pay this particular amount of money for this flight you don't you know you could but maybe by waiting a month and by taking a flight at an awkward time with a stopover or something you could save a lot of money and that is money that you can save in order to put towards a future trip or to let you stay in the place for longer now you can also use Airbnb like I said for accommodation this is where people rent out their homes or rooms um, privately to you through the app you can use that and you know with that you can do things like if you book for a week or more or a month or more you get the discounts so they'll give you a percentage discount off the price if you book for a certain amount of time so often it's actually cheaper for example to go for a month than it is to go for three weeks which doesn't sound like it makes sense but it, it, that's how it works you know they give you the monthly discount which makes up for that week in most cases so be sensible about how long you're going for if you're booking through through Airbnb, try and hit either the week or the month uh, checkpoints because there'll be a discount. And you know, there's loads of things like that, guys. There's loads of there's loads of uh, money saving methods or tips you can use. Uh, for example, when you go to a place, if you're staying in a place for longer than a week, it makes more sense to stay in a place with a kitchen or you know somewhere you can prepare food and just buy local food at a supermarket and then cook it in your apartment. It's not as fun, but it's certainly cheaper. And you know, if you're traveling on a budget, that's a great way of saving money. A really big way of saving money is something that lots of people don't do. And that is just, wherever you go, there is gonna be, with some exceptions, there's gonna be a big tourist hub, like a central tourist area. And then on the outskirts of that, you're gonna find the local areas. This is where the people who live there go to eat or you know, to do things. As much as possible, you wanna try and stay away from the tourist areas for eating. Obviously go to the tourist areas by all means for your vlog, for the experiences and for the things that they have there. But don't, if you can help it, don't eat in those places because they know tourists go there and they know that they can get away with higher prices. It's as simple as that. So I don't know guys, this is, this is just my take on this stuff. Obviously I've, I'm not an experienced travel vlogger, I can't say that, but I am at the moment a travel vlogger. You know, I have got this channel, I have been making videos and I'm going to be making lots of videos in the future. Um, I just wanted to share my opinion on it because I've run a fairly big channel on, on lucid dreaming so I sort of know how, how YouTube works in terms of what people are looking for and I think more than anything people are just looking for genuine videos and although really well produced videos are good and high quality videos are important I think it's more important you know especially if you're starting out and you know it's very competitive these days on YouTube it's very crowded so to succeed you really need to enjoy what you're doing the best way of enjoying what you're doing is to just be genuine and to actually experience trips and, and events as if you are enjoying them because you should be and then if you happen to film them that's a bonus for you and everyone watching so hopefully this has been helpful if you have enjoyed this video please subscribe and see you next time Done. <laughs>